Hey folks, Matt Eaton here, Scholar Gladiatorial. Now, it's by a strange coincidence that in the last couple of weeks I've been getting a lot of comments coming up on one of my own video, one of my old videos talking about the um, Danax. Um, and equally, I've been getting some videos coming up on a couple of my other old videos. Um, bizarrely, there's been some convergence in the comments and questions that have been coming up in those old videos. Now, I can't always control or uh, predict why certain of my old videos suddenly come up um, and are starting to get comments again. Again. Uh, I guess it's presumably because they've been posted somewhere out there on the internet on some Facebook thread or you know I don't know Twitter or, or some kind of forum or something um, but basically those videos get exposure again and so sometimes old topics come back up so this isn't actually an old topic as such because the comments that have come underneath have actually inspired um, a, me to make a couple of videos on these topics so the first topic is you'll notice I'm holding my uh, good old favorite um, Danax here from Thor's Forge from Tord, and uh, it is a, a wonderful, wonderful thing, but I'm actually not going to talk about this in this video because you'll notice that I'm wearing on my back a shield. Now, the reason for that is because on the Bayer Tapestry, we see these housecarls sometimes, which are using big two-handed weapons. We see them wearing shields on their back. Now, obviously, that has certain inherent advantages. Um, potentially, you know, in the age of male, uh, so pre-plate, that could give you extra protection potentially against uh, cavalry anybody really attacking you from behind maybe from missiles and this is one of the things we have to um, accept about um, shields is that they don't only have an active defense they have a passive defense as well and literally wearing one on your back so long as it doesn't impede you and get in your way well, why not do it? Because it means you've got a shield on your back, which um, is obviously going to protect you far better against things like thrown spears or um, shot arrows than just your male shirt, if you have a male shirt, will do. Um, but so what I really want to talk about is actually the fact that I've got a shield on my back. And now some people have noted this in uh, manuscript pictures that I've shown. Um, sometimes it might be with a sword rather than an axe or some other kind of weapon that's being used. It might just be that the person is not actually fighting at all, but they want to stick their shield out of the way. Um, now, this strapped method of sticking shields out of the way is something that evidently comes in quite early because, as I say, we see it in the Bayer Tapestry. So um, we're talking about, you know, 1066 AD there. And there is some evidence archaeologically that some earlier shields, kind of Anglo-Saxon era shields, and Merovingian shields had straps on them as well and when you think about it it makes good sense because you don't want to have to physically carry your shield in your hand all the time if you're on foot sometimes you want to do something maybe it's eat or go to the toilet or uh, do whatever you want to do um, uh, you know and you want your hands free you don't want to be carrying a shield equally if you're on horseback if you want to put your shield down, where do you put it? If you're on horseback, you can't necessarily put your shield even on the ground because you can't reach down to it. And if you do put it down on the ground, you can't then get your shield back again without getting off your horse, picking up the shield and getting back onto the horse. So on horseback, it's got an even, you could even argue, an even more important purpose because if you want to, if you're just riding, you don't need to have your shield in your hands. Well, why not have it strapped somewhere? So, um, Let's take this off for a second. Um, now, I'm going to try and do this, there we go, without disturbing the microphone too much. So, what we often see um, in looking at manuscripts and such like is that the shield is held conventionally um, like this. And uh, we often see that the strap is put around the neck at the same time. Now that serves a whole nother purpose. Now what we further see is sometimes this strap, rather than being used to wear the shield essentially, and either to use two hands or just because you're traveling or whatever, sometimes this strap is actually put around the neck when the person is using the shield on their arm. Uh, now, one thing I have to mention is, so this is a, a replica by Shields Plus. It's not the most historically accurate replica in the world, but from a functional point of view, it's pretty damn good. And one thing you note is that the strap has to be able to be adjusted because as you'll see here, that was the length of the strap as I was wearing the shield. And if I just put it around my neck, it, makes, it means that I can't move the shield very far from my body. Um, certainly not as far as I would want to use it in combat. Ideally, when fighting with the shield, I want to be able to hold the shield as far out as that at times, okay? Which means I need a correspondingly longer amount of strap. So what we do here is we have, it's just like a belt, um, as you can see. It's, 
it needs it, you need to be able to lengthen it so let's move it up to I'm just guessing at this point about there and let's see how much strap that gives me there we go so that's a little bit more reasonable hope it's not clashing on the microphone for you but that's a little bit more reasonable um, reach and length now for combat now that has some additional um, benefits because whilst it's now too loose for me to wear it um, for traveling or riding kind of purposes it does mean I can take the weight off my arm it means I'm not physically having to hold the shield up the whole time by adjusting the shield to different angles for example to there I can quite easily stand if I was um, on guard duty or um, you know kind of standing on a fortification or if I was literally just standing in line um, uh, or you know just walking or whatever it means that I can take the weight off my shoulder and off my arm and I can let the shield rest there quite comfortably I can rest it on my leg or I can not rest it on my leg doesn't really make an awful lot of difference but it means that my shield's in front of me and I'm using no strength of my arm at the moment to sustain that it is literally just hanging off my neck and it's not onerous it's not uh, a problem at all but it does mean the shield's in the right position so uh, therefore it has as we've seen already you can wear the shield which enables you to use two hands or just to carry the shield if you don't want to carry it in your hand but equally you can strap it this way which does mean um, that you can take the weight off your shoulder if your shield's just essentially in a passive position and you're not doing much else the next and final um, application for this is actually in combat. So if I'm actually fighting and I'm employing this shield, I would actually probably want a little bit more reach on it than that. So let's yet again adjust the length on this. So if I was going into combat um, or expecting combat to be imminent, I'd probably want quite a lot of um, uh, kind of, not extension, a kind of... Um, quite a lot of range as it were on this strap. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention incidentally while I'm doing this, uh, this strap is commonly called a guige, I believe it's pronounced, a G-U-I-G-E, uh, which is obviously a French, well obviously it is a French word. Um, I actually don't know what this means in French and I don't really know how to pronounce it properly, but I think it's guige um, and it's the strap that isn't the one that goes around your arms, it's the one that goes around your neck or around your body. Now you'll notice I've done this even looser and I still can if I want suspend the shield such that I can take the weight off my arms, I can rest it like that. I could in fact even uh, have the shield momentarily hanging from me but still in front of my body and use my hands like this and then slip my arms back into where they need to be to use it in combat. And you'll notice that by adjusting the point at which it's at contact with my neck um, I, can, I can adjust the angle of the shield slightly if I let the bottom come in more like that. There we go, the top end goes out. Okay, so I'd want it comfortably for fighting about there. Now in terms of why you would want it strapped in close combat. I think mostly it's for the things that you're doing which don't involve close combat. In other words, when you need to use your hands for something other than holding the shield. Potentially, you could argue that if you want to slip the arm out because you're getting into a grappling situation, that's possible, but I think the shield's going to get in the way in that situation. From here you could sling the thing, if you slip your arm out you could sling it around onto your back but the problem is then is it hangs very very low and whilst that does enable you to use both hands it's now interfering with my hips and my legs. So I'm not so sure, I'm not very convinced by that, I think you would need to adjust the length of the strap in order to fight whilst wearing the shield, okay? Which in fairness though, will only take you um, maybe 30 seconds to do but you couldn't do it like in the midst of combat. Um, but it does potentially increase the control over the shield. So for example, if you've got your uh, shield out in front of you here and you're fighting away, one of the things that people can do is try and lever or manipulate your shield. So to, to wrench it out open this way. Well, because you've got this extra point of leverage here now, this strap, and that's anchoring the lower part of the shield as well here, it does to some degree give you a little bit more stability because if you think about it we've now got one two three four points of contact and control with that shield so it's possible i'm not fully convinced by this but it uh, is possible that those uh, that guise strap um, does assist making the shield a little bit more uh, stable in close combat um, but 
Conversely, what you pay for with that is of course less mobility if you're relying on those straps. If I take that strap off and bunch it in my hands so it's not hanging out of the way, which is what I'd recommend. Incidentally, if you leave them hanging down, they're gonna get in the way, maybe get tangled in your weapons or whatever. If you bunch them up and grip them in your strap a bit like horse's reins, um, now your shield is fully uh, capable to move around and do whatever it needs to do. So, that, uh, so at that point, you can use your shield as you'd normally use it. So you can still have your guise strap ready. And what I would say is if you are someone who's likely to use a two-handed weapon, so let's just see how quickly I can adjust this back. So I've gone from full length to da, 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 shortened length pretty much that quickly. There we go, okay. So that's now the wearable length as we saw before, so I can easily now wear it. I can now switch quite quickly from a wearable shield to a usable shield, and because that strap's now shorter and I can further bunch it up if I want to, that strap's not in the way at all for close combat. So for example, if I'm using, using a sword and doing whatever I need to do in close combat here, whereas I can quite quickly now if I want to, slip that shield on and use a Dane axe pretty damn readily and quickly as I need to do it. Okay, so there we go. Um, a summary and overview. I, as I always say, I'm not an expert particularly on uh, shields, but you can quite easily wear a shield, get a shield on and off, use a sword, use a two-handed weapon, um, and this strap is the key to that. But it needs to, in my view, it needs to be an adjustable length and you need to uh, bunch it up in the hand if you're not using it and we do know from the artwork that sometimes when they were using the shield in close combat they did wear the guige extended but the reasons for that well your views and experience are welcome as always um, but the reasons for that are kind of the jury's out on that we don't know exactly anyway i hope that's been interesting see you soon give us a like and a subscribe and i'll see you soon for another video cheers folks Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.